Um, so the next piece about caching and performance is to scale your installation itself. So you've done Drupal, right? So now, what else can I do outside of testing things on the server to make Drupal scale? <clears throat> Load test. If you don't know how many, how many users per minute your server can handle and your site can handle, how are you going to know when it's going to break or when you're going to be able to, how, what kind of improvements you can have? So load testing, is, there's a number of tools that can do it that you can download. Um, JMeter is one, it's, it's pretty geeky, it's a command line thing and you run it. You can do things with, uh, you know, do the search for, for load testing on, on your favorite search engine and you're gonna get all kinds of nifty little things. There's schemes for people doing with little Perl scripts with wget with, with all kinds of stuff to just hammer away the server and see how many people it can handle all at once. Um, it's a great way of knowing where you're going to break and where, where you can improve things. And it's also a great way to know did I improve something? Hey, I made all these changes. Did it improve? Run a load test on it, you can tell. Don't run a load test on your production site. The whole point of load testing is to run so many connections against your site that it stops working so that you know where that point is. You don't want to do that on your live production site. <clears throat> what was the tool you mentioned? JMeter. That's what we use internally. It's a command line load testing tool, you can specify all kinds of little things. I recommend everyone that if you start load testing your site to let your ISP know or they'll think it's a DOS yes. or DDoS attack. Because it, it will be a sudden strange traffic profile. Now all of a sudden you have thousands or hundreds or even dozens of connections coming from one IP address connecting to your server and doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. To an ISP that looks a little weird. I had that problem at MIT, and I thought the load test was successful. Like, set the site down. It turned out someone else turned the switch. <laughs> you thought you knew where you broke. You just yeah. knew where your ISP was going to stop you. Yeah. <laughs> so code performance is another thing. And this is something that you're not going to be able to just run through and install a module to fix. You, you really need to be a coder to, to do this. But it's amazing how inefficient some Drupal modules, some contributed modules are. In fact, mine's probably one of them, but um, Drupal developers will do silly, silly little things in their code, like I need to, to, to you know, fetch this value from the database and now I'm gonna use it 400 times inside this loop. Well, they put the fetch inside the loop, so I go 400 times and I hit the database every single time. That's gonna kill the performance of your site, it's really gonna slow things down. So taking a look at, if you start to notice I enabled this module and my site slowed to a crawl, or I disable this module and my site starts to wake back up. <coughs> Excuse me. Taking a look at the code, the, the, the module, and, and profiling it and understanding and reading it and going, what is this guy doing? And is there anything here that just looks really stupid? And if there is, fix it. And please send the module developer a patch. Let him know, hey, I fixed this for you. This was the issue, here's where it was. Every single time I, I point out an issue on, on Drupal.org to a contributing project, I, I don't ever log a bug. I log a bug with an attached patch. Here's the bug and this is the, this is fixes it. It's a great way to, to make module developers happy with you, more responsive to your requests, and, and it's a lot more likely that your issue is going to get fixed and fixed for everyone. And, and it's a real selfish reason I do it as well. Because if I fix the issue on my end and I don't tell the developer about it, the next time they upgrade to add a, a, a new feature or fix something else, I install it, my upgrade's broke, my, my, my feature is missing, my patch is missing. So now I've got to redo it and redo all that, that work. If I supply it to them a patch, real good chance it's going to just be in the next release and it's going to be there. Alongside of that is query optimization. So writing SQL is really easy. Writing good SQL is not. Most developers out there do not write good SQL. They have ugly, ugly joins. They return too much data. They do all kinds of things that make your database work too hard and make the amount of data coming from your database to your web server a lot more data. You're pushing, pushing bits back and forth that aren't needed. Joining tables that aren't used. 
That, that sort of stuff is, is a real performance killer. So looking at those queries and figuring out, hey, what's the minimum that I need in order to do this? Optimizing your queries, rewriting those, and again, providing a patch. Send the developer a patch. Hey, I noticed your SQL query was doing this and this and this, and this join's more efficient, and hey, it was pulling back all this data that it didn't need. I fixed that, and now we've got more performance out of it. Here's a patch for you. There's tools to help people optimize their queries, correct? Yeah, there's, there's query profilers. Um, there's, uh, there's all sorts of things for that. There's, there's built into MySQL. There's the explain command. Take any, any database command you're going to send and put the word explain in front of it. And MySQL will tell you how much work it had to do to run that query, how many tables it had to touch, and all of this other stuff. Great way, figuring out indexes, figuring out optimization. Uh, if you want to know, hey, is, is this query using an index? Explain will tell you if it's using an index. If you run explain and you get a response saying, using file sort, that's bad. You're killing your server. Figure out what's in there that you can do, make, a, or make a, a, uh, an index for. That will help solve that for you. Do you find that the uh, queries generated by views are fairly good? Or? They're not bad. Um, uh, I mean, I'm just wondering because how would you customize how would you, you, you don't. Um, so, so views is a visual query builder, essentially. You go through and you say, I want this, and I want this, and I want this, and I want it all combined here, running this template, and spit it all out. Um, but it's having to go through and say, OK, here's the data I want. Here's all the, 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 your, the, the users asking for these things. Let me write SQL for it. If that was an easy thing to do and do well, programmers wouldn't have jobs. Because a business owner could sit down in front of a computer and go, I'd really like an invoice entry system. And I sketched it out on paper. It looks like this. And it would be done. Um, so visual builders, in general, don't do a real good job. Views does a pretty good job of, of the important stuff like joins. And it, it, the joins it writes are, are usually efficient and usually the most efficient way of doing it. They're also, it also does a good job of returning data that you're asking for and not everything in every table that, that you join. Um, so it, it does an OK job. It could be better. Um, what about indexes? I mean, as far as obviously the tables are created by CCK. Yep. Now, you can add indexes on top, because views is just creating the, the, uh, the SQL query, and it's running. So you can't really change the query that's being run with views, but you can change how that impacts the database. So you can look and see, this query is doing this, and it's hitting these database tables, and it's looking these things up, and hey, it's using file sort, and boy, that's really killing my server. So I can take that query, and I can add indexes that work with that query. Remember, every index you add, Disk space. It's a good trade-off, though, unless you're really, really out of disk space. Yeah, it's a very good trade-off. I want to bring up a point. For those who are actually getting into development of Drupal, and you're not really used to writing SQL statements to talk to a database, the views module is actually, I think, a really good start to have it build you a basic query, and you copying that query and using it somewhere, or just learning your SQL from that to start with. You know, if you don't know how to do any SQL, a tool like that will get you definitely rolling. And also, too, if you do module development and you want to provide views with your module to integrate with views, you can just copy all those queries out, package them in, and even provide it as a view that would show up for your custom content type or something. You know? So I just wanted to bring that up for those who are out there interested in learning SQL. Thanks. Um, if you want to see what those queries are, there's a module called Devel that you can install. And Devel, one of its features that you can enable is it will go through and it will read all the queries that you're writing, that, that all the modules and all the queries that are being used to build the page, and it will list them at the bottom of the page, including how long they took to run and how many times they were each one was run. So if one was run more than one time, it'll show you that. If you see a module is writing the same query 30, 40 times, that's a great place to go look for code performance improvements. There's no reason a module should run the same query a lot of times. One or two times, you know, one or two times extra, maybe a dozen times, there's probably some way you can fix that problem. But Devel will show you that. Again, not on a production site. Definitely don't do it on a production site. It does slow things down. 
It only spits those queries out for the admin user, so it's not like everybody's going to come along and see how your database is structured and, and get that. But Devel can, the, and its query logging can bite you in strange and wonderful ways. Um, I was doing a data import of a, a many, many hundred gig database, pulling a, a several thousand user WordPress MU system, converting it to Drupal and running it. And the data import that, that I was writing, all the code that I was writing to this import, kept breaking, it kept dying. And I couldn't figure out where my memory leak was because it kept growing and growing and growing. I started spitting out how much memory was being used on each iteration. Every time it would run, it would grow a little bit, it would grow a little bit more. Then all of a sudden, it started growing exponentially. The amount of memory in the server would run out of memory and shut down. Couldn't figure out why I had a memory leak. I'm researching memory leaks in PHP and memory leaks in, in all kinds of different places. I had the Devel module enabled. And so in that import tool, in that utility as it's running, every single query that ran, it stored it dutifully. Hey, I ran this, I ran this, I ran this, I ran this. And it may take two, 300 queries to run a Drupal page. Now imagine running that 80,000 times. That's a lot of text to store 200 queries 80,000 times, and some of them enormous queries sucking in whole blog posts from, from another site. So develop only on your development site, and I like to disable it when I don't actually need it, when I'm not doing something with it that's, that's needed. I'll turn it on when I'm getting a bug or something like that, but I don't run it all the time. 